So in yesterday's video, I was talking about how I um, am uh, has really resolved to to listen to less music, but um, to to listen um, very much more intentionally. And and um, in in this video, I kind of wanted to address a very similar thing with um, with books. And the reason I came across I came upon this uh, this resolution a little bit of a different way. Um, I started listening to uh, the Tolkien Professor podcast uh, with Professor Col uh, Corey Olson, and um, I'm way behind on it. I'm, you know, for those who are familiar with the podcast, it's been going on for for many years now, and um, I only uh, I only recently started it, um, uh, perhaps a year ago, and. So I think the last time I looked, uh, when I was um, when I was playing the episode, my podcast um, uh, uh, my podcast catcher said that this episode that I was playing was like four years old or three years old. I, I might be I might be drifting into the three year old ones now. Um, so I'm catching up, but you know I've gone through <laughs> I've gone through like two or three years of them uh, already in uh, in the last year. So um, I. Uh, I, I am slowly catching up, but I got a ways to go. But the, you know, the the one thing I've really noticed going through these is, uh, and 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 I've I've uh, I've read I've read Tolkien quite a bit. I've um, I've read uh, read Summer Early only once, uh, but Lord of the Rings a couple of times, Hobbit three times, perhaps. Um, uh, you know, certain other um, works of his uh, a few times. Uh, I haven't read it all yet. Um, uh, hoping to get there, but um, he he is somebody I greatly admire and and uh, greatly enjoy his work. And so uh, he is somebody that I that I regularly read. And I going through going through those lectures, I was struck by how much I didn't know and how much I had missed. And Tolkien is one of those writers who um, who if if you don't know. If you don't know the whole history of everything, then there's going to be a lot of references that just go right over your head because, um, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like if if somebody were thrust into this society and had no idea the amount of times that we would be referencing different characters in histories and different events that they wouldn't know about is. Um, it would be astronomical, and Tolkien knew this, and um, so he had a ton of references that uh, that I mean have have become available to us to, to learn about. Um, but you know, at the time the Lord of the Rings was published, like you could not know everything that was in it because so much of it was coming from the Silmarillion, which hadn't been published. You know, there's so many references that the reader just, it was impossible for the reader to actually know what was being said. Um, but that's throughout Tolkien. And, and, you know, he's one of those authors that you you have to read through his works a couple of times before you before you even really start catching all, uh, all the references and everything that's going on. And, um, and so as you read, as you continue to reread, his works become much, much deeper. And I was finding this when I was listening to it. And it's like, you know, after reading, after reading the works a couple of times and watching the movies many times and, um, uh, and uh, you know, uh, reading about him and reading works about Tolkien, reading criticism about him, I thought I really had a good handle on him. And I, I didn't. And, um, and so, you know, it, I began thinking about this and much in the same way as the as the music question is uh, just the decision that I would rather I would rather get to know some authors really well than to um, to read tons of work but not very deeply um, and so uh, much like much like the music thing it's, I oh that was bummy so much like much like the resolution with music, the resolution here is to be much more picky about what I read, and and not even not even I was like okay well I'll just try to read only really great works because I can you know I can read really great works um, 
very, very shallowly for the rest of my life and still have really great works out there to read. And I don't need to read all of them. Um, I would, I would rather, I would rather pick and choose um, those things I'm very interested in and get to know them very well. And, and I find, I, and I, honestly, I find that even more with music, I, I have bought and downloaded books that ultimately I'm never going to read. Um, I own tons of books I'm never going to read again. And it, it, it's even somewhat a little bit different than, than the music thing. Because, like, you buy a CD and you can get through it in an hour, right? You can't do that with a book. And so you go to, go to half price books and you kind of load down with stuff that's cheap and halfway interesting. Or you're going through Facebook. It's like, oh, another book, you know, another free, uh, free theology book from, you know, some theologian I really like. Or a free fantasy book that looks halfway interesting or... Um, or something like that, and um, I just, you know, I just, I load up, I load up my bookcases with them, and uh, load up my Kindle with them, and um, you know, so much so that they get far down in the download list, and I, you know, peek through it every once in a while, and I didn't even remember I downloaded one particular one or another, and I even found that with, uh, you know, with my own writing, it's like the first, uh, the first book of the Eighth Power. Um, was free on all devices for a very long time. And I've had, you know, it's another story, but I've had trouble keeping it free on Kindle for some reason. They're just not recognizing uh, that it should be free anymore. Um, just really frustrating because that's supposed to be the introductory book to the series. But, I, you know, I had, I had it free forever. And thousands upon thousands of downloads of that book happened. And there's like four reviews of it. And so, you know, I, and, I, and I realized that not, uh, I mean, a, a certain percentage of people who read a book write a review of it. I, and I totally understand that. And, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not expecting a thousand people to download it and 900 people to review it. But thousands of people downloading it and four people reviewing it indicates to me that they did the same thing that I did. Which is, ah, free book. That looks halfway interesting. Click, download, it's done. It doesn't take up any space. It doesn't take any money. It, it's just there. And if I ever get to it, fantastic. If I don't, it's fine. But they did the same thing to me that I'm doing to other authors. And I honestly, I honestly would prefer far fewer people download it but actually read it. I mean, look, I mean, you know, this is, this is not, this is not something I'm probably ever going to make money at. I mean, real money. I'm never going to make a career of writing anymore. Um, you know, I, I'm going to do it as, as something I really enjoy and something I'm passionate about and something that I want to share, you know, but I, I, I would rather have a handful of really devoted readers than 10,000 people who hit download on the book and never touch it. And so realizing all of this, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to change the way I read things. And so uh, I've been doing this far less than I've been, you know, really being picky and choosy with music. But um, it's really considering what I have on my shelf, what I, I should have on my shelf. And, you know, and it doesn't mean don't buy, not buying books. It's like one of the authors I really want I really want to study is Tolkien, and I have a ton of his books. I don't have all of them, um, and so I need to round out that collection. Uh, there's a couple of other authors that, you know, if I'm going to make a list of, of people that I really want to get into, and that's not really what I'm doing either. I mean, you know, it's not, I want to read these 10 authors for the rest of my life. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's going to be plenty of room for me to grab books that... Uh, of authors I haven't read but really interest me to see if this is an author I need to read. Um, but if I'm if I'm going to make a list, there's 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 very going to be very few authors on that list that I have all of their books or I have everything that I want to read. 
And so it, this doesn't mean I'm not buying books anymore, but it is meaning that I'm really considering what I'm buying and really considering what I'm downloading and, uh, and really looking at what I already have on the shelf. And even if I bought a book, Maybe I even bought it new. Maybe I even bought bought it at full price. And if I'm looking at it, like, I really don't have any intention of ever reading this. And I don't have any intention of ever giving it to my kids to read. And uh, my wife doesn't ever have intention of reading it. Then it's time to pull it off the shelf and um, really start whittling down the library a little bit. Um, which is a big task. I, uh, I mentioned in the last video that I was... Uh, for many years, <clears throat> very much a CD and book and, and, uh, and DVD uh, hoarder. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I would I would buy too much and I would never get rid of what I bought. Uh, that, you know, there were books that, uh, that I, I just, I, I actually read and were, this was terrible. This is a terrible, terrible book. And I still put it back on my shelf and I didn't sell it. And um, because I, you know... I, I had bought the book and I wanted it there. Um, I'm over that, and um, it's time to get rid of a lot of this stuff. And so I want, you know, I I want to continue this discussion one more one more video to really to to really flesh out what 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 this is what this is going to mean to to kind of follow this resolution uh, as it goes and. Um, and to see where it's going to end up, and but I think um, I think this is something that we all, as individual people, really need to consider: is is how we are taking in media uh, of all kinds, um, how how much um, how, how much of it is just pure pure entertainment that. And there's nothing wrong with just pure entertainment that, you know, you're just watching a crazy uh, explosion action flick that doesn't have any redeeming social value. I have no problem with that. But how much of our media consumption is, is actually thoughtful and actually intentional and what we're getting out of it. Um, and my feeling is that there's a lot of us out there that was like me that once got a lot out of media consumption and, um, and then... And then got overwhelmed by it and uh, stopped getting as much out of it, even though, it, you know, there was much more media to consume. And so that, that's, that's, that's the conversation I want to have. And so, you know, please join me next time and we will uh, talk about this some more. Thank you.